Hi there, welcome to the Visual ModFlow Flex video training series. My name is Brandon McNeil and I'm the software trainer here at Waterloo Hydrogeologic. In this video I'll review the process for translating and finally running your groundwater model. The translation step refers to the translation of model elements from within the Visual ModFlow Flex interface into the input files required by the various versions of ModFlow. Please note that this video provides a general overview of model translation. There are many translation settings which are not discussed in this video. For more information, please refer to the VMOD Flex user manual or the USGS ModFlow documentation. Before translating and running your model, please note that all model properties and boundary conditions should have been assigned in the previous workflow steps. Once all of your boundary conditions have been applied, you can proceed to the next workflow step, which actually presents you with several optional steps. These optional steps include defining particles, defining zone budget zones, and defining observation wells. Each of these steps can significantly enhance the results of your modeling project. The Define Particle step allows you to seed your model with particle origin points for use with ModPath. The ModPath program is used for calculating the advective flow path lines for forward and backwards tracking particles. This is extremely helpful in visualizing flow lines for well interference or contaminant fate in remediation applications. You can assign particles on an individual basis using an existing points data object or by defining a circle of particles around a single point. This can be helpful when estimating the capture zone of a pumping well. It's possible for ModPath to track particles forwards and backwards through time, and you can also choose which layer these particles will be assigned to. If you're defining your particles using a circle, you'll also have to define the radius of that circle and the number of particles to apply at the edge of the circle. The Define Zone Budget Zone step allows you to calculate the flow mass balance for user-defined zones. By default, ModFlow will perform a mass balance on your entire model domain. Zone Budget allows you to extend that analysis to more specific areas of interest. For example, I could assign a custom zone budget zone along the edge of my river so I can get more detailed water budget analysis data for that boundary condition. Zone budget zones can be assigned using most of the same uh, tools as for other boundary conditions and property zones. When you've applied or selected the, new, the, the area for the new zone budget zone, you can select whether to create a new zone budget zone or assign it to an existing one, and of course also decide which layers will be included. And finally, the Define Observation Well step allows you to define data against which your model can be calibrated. These data points will be used to generate calibration charts at the View Charts workflow step. Observation data can only be assigned using existing wells data objects, so make sure to import your observation data if you want to calibrate your model. To assign them to the model, simply select the observation wells data object and load it in using the blue arrow button. When these optional steps are complete, or if they're not required for your model, then you can proceed to the next step, which is to select the run type. When you click this button, you'll proceed to the following window shown here, prompting you to select between a regular single run or whether to do a pest run. A pest run is for parameter estimation and model calibration. This is something we'll discuss in a, in a different video. Typically, you'll want to select a single run. When you initiate the single run, the page shown here will load, prompting you to select from the available flow and transport engines. The selection of engines will depend on the model objective selected during the first step, the defined modeling objective step, and whether or not transport was selected as active during that step. It's also possible to select mod path and zone budget if you would like to run these secondary engines. Once the engines are selected, you can proceed to the actual model translation step. The translate workflow step allows you to specify exactly how the model input files will be generated. There are dozens of model settings present within the translation step, and we won't be able to discuss them all here. For more information relating to any of these settings, please refer to the VMOD Flex and USGS ModFlow documentation. But also note that a short description of each translation setting is also provided directly in the VMOD Flex interface near the bottom of the translation window. The settings node under the main ModFlow engine allows you to specify whether the model will be run under steady state or transient model conditions. For steady state simulations, 
You can also specify the steady state simulation time, which is the time specified for the mass balance terms in a steady state run. When transient is selected, then a table will load below the mod flow settings which describes the distribution of model stress periods. Visual mod flow flex will automatically merge all of the different time periods defined for all of the different pumping wells and boundary conditions into the uniform stress period format required by mod flow. A stress period is defined as a time period in which all of the stresses, including boundary conditions, pumping rates, etc., on the system are at constant values. Each stress period can have a num user specified number of time steps, and each stress period can also be run as under steady state conditions if required. Under the Solvers node, you will find all of the information relating to the selected solver. A solver is the specific algorithm used by ModFlow to solve the system of groundwater flow equations. Please note that most of the, engine, the ModFlow engines supported by Visual ModFlow Flex that support the use of five different solvers. The settings associated with these different solvers are frequently very similar. Settings related to the max number of outer and inner iterations are related to the number of attempts ModFlow will make to reach a convergent solution to the system of equations. Other common settings include the head change and residual criterion. These values provide a target which ModFlow will attempt to reach. With each successive iteration of the solver, ModFlow should hopefully come closer and closer to a convergent solution. The head change and residual criterion help ModFlow to know when sufficient precision has been achieved in the solution. The initial heads translation setting allows you to specify how initial head values will be determined. Three options are available. The Use Specified Heads option tells ModFlow to use the initial head values as they were input during the Define Properties step. The Use Ground Elevation option tells ModFlow to simply set initial head values to the ground surface elevation. And finally, you can use the results of a previous model run to define the initial heads in a subsequent model run. This method requires you to select a .hds or heads file from a previous ModFlow run and specify the time step to be used. ModFlow users will frequently use the results of a steady state model run to define the initial conditions for a subsequent transient model. Another important setting during the translation step is the output control, which determines how frequently results will be exported from your model. For steady state models, there will be only be one output time available by default. However, for transient model runs, it's possible to export results at multiple times. During a transient model run, by default, results will be exported at the end of each stress period. However, it is also possible to specify additional output times. Use the Every Nth Step button to turn on or off the results at regular intervals. And please note that advanced translation settings are available for flow simulations to enable more advanced control of translation and package settings. In other words, it is possible to incorporate ModFlow packages which are not supported within the Visual ModFlow Flex interface. If you open one of these packages and see that the Translate setting is set to No, this indicates that the selected package is not supported within the VMod Flex interface. In this case, VMod Flex will not be able to create the selected package. However, if you're an advanced user and you're able to generate the input files yourself using a text editor, then you can change the Run setting to Yes. This will indicate to Visual ModFlow Flex that a user-provided package has been saved to the ModFlow folder for this particular model run. In this case, the file will be run by ModFlow even though it isn't supported and wasn't created in the Visual ModFlow Flex interface. When all the translation settings have been specified, click the Translate button to generate model input files. A translation log will be displayed indicating whether any errors were experienced with the file translation. If everything is successful, then the log will say so, indicating translation finished at the bottom of the log. A series of tabs will then become available in the interface. Each tab corresponds to a single ModFlow input file. These files can be difficult to read, but it can still be helpful to review them to ensure that everything looks correct. As you learn more about groundwater modeling and ModFlow, you'll come to learn more about these input files. When model files have been translated, you can proceed to the next step of the workflow, which is to run your model. Simply click the Run button to initiate the ModFlow run. 
Each selected engine, including ModFlow, ModPath, Zone Budget, and any transport engines, will run in sequence. Each engine should display a run log indicating whether the run was successful or not and display results in a text format. Additional information about the model run is saved to the list file, the .lst file, which can be accessed from the interface by clicking the button above the run log. The list file is very useful if errors occur during a simulation and you want to know how far the mod flow model progressed or if you want to examine head or drawdown values at given intervals. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned for more Visual ModFlow Flex training videos. The next video in this series will focus on reviewing and visualizing model results. For additional training resources, including user manuals and free tutorials, please visit the vModFlex support page on our website. A link is provided in the video description.